Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at creating a whimsical cross stitch design in Illustrator. I'm going to start by creating a new document. Mine's 1920 by 1080 pixels. Yours can be any size that you like. I am using RGB color mode. If you're using an earlier version of Illustrator, your dialogue's going to look different, but you're going to have these advanced options here that you can open or close. Just selected RGB color mode. So we're going to start with our cross stitch shape and I'm using the blob brush which you can find underneath the paintbrush tool. I've got black set as my color and I'm just going to drag out a sort of cross shape but first of all I'm going to double click on the blob brush to see what the settings are and I'm going to go sort of halfway between accurate and smooth which will give me a sort of slightly rough effect which is what I want. You can also adjust the size of the brush should you wish to do so. I'll click OK. And now I'm just going to create a sort of X shape, but I want it to be slightly rough. Because we're creating something that is sort of whimsical, it needs to be rough and not perfect. Now once I've done that, if I select over it, you'll see what the blob brush does is it gives you a filled shape. So this is not a stroke any longer, it's a filled shape. With it selected, I can then go to the smooth tool and if I want to, I can just smooth out some of these lines. You can just sort of paint over them with the smooth tool to smooth out your shape if you think there are some bits that need work. You can also use any other tool that you like. For example, the eraser tool is going to let you erase bits of your shape. And then you can go back and smooth them. So there's lots of tools here that you can use even if you're not very good at painting and you certainly don't want to be using the pen tool because it's not going to give you a rough enough shape. Now this is way too big for me to use so I'm just going to size it down. I'm holding the shift key to size it in proportion. So that's going to be my little cross stitch. I'm going to the brushes panel which you can also get to by choosing window and then brushes. All these panels are accessible from the windows menu. I'll click here on new and I'm going to make a scatter brush. I'll click OK. When the scatter brush options open the only thing I'm going to change at this stage is the colorization method to tints and click OK again. The brush needs to be configured, but it's easier to configure your brush when you've got something to apply it to. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool. I'm going to hold the shift key as I just create a square. At the moment it's filled and it has no strokes. So I'm going to flip these two so it has a stroke and no fill. And I'm going to click here on my scatter brush so that I can apply my scatter brush to it. You can already see that it has a sort of uneven quality to it, but we're going to make it a whole lot more uneven. To do this, we're going to double click on the scatter brush and then start adjusting the settings. We're going to make the size random. I'm going to vary its size between about 90% and 100. With preview turned on, you'll see that this is going to start making some of these X's a little bit smaller than others. We'll go to spacing again, make that random. I'm going to take this down to 90% and probably up to 110%. Again, just varying the spacing. I'm ignoring this down here right now. The scatter again, I'm going to make that random and then I'm going to just make it about minus 10. I'm just clicking in this box here and pressing shift down arrow and that goes in sort of increments of 10%. I think that's a pretty good setting here. We've got a little bit of scatter and we're also going to set some rotation. Again, just a small amount of rotation from minus 10% to plus 10% just so we've got some variety in our shape. You can change the rotation also if you want to relative to the path as against relative to the page. In this case we probably want it to be relative to the page so that all the X's are sort of upright. If we go relative to the path things are going to sort of twist around as they go. It's probably not quite what we want. I'll click OK and we're going to click apply to stroke so that it's applied to the shape. We do have a slight problem down here and that is an overlap here on the brush. Now we could try adjusting the shape but you can see that I've got exactly the same problem however big or small I make this shape. 
The reason for this is that the brush is scaling with the shape. If we don't want that to happen, we can go to our Preferences Edit and Preferences on the Mac. It's Illustrator Preferences and we'll go to General. What we want to do is disable Scale Strokes and Effects and click OK. And now when I adjust the size of the shape, you'll see that the brush is just changing its position a little bit and we just want to adjust it so that the brush looks all right around our shape. Now we can apply this same brush to a line. So I'm going to the pencil tool. I'm just going to draw out a line. I've got a slight smoothing on the pencil tool, as you can see. Click on the line and apply our brush to it. In this case, we would probably want to rotate the brush along the line. So I'm going to select here on options of selected object and I'm going to do the rotation relative to the path rather than relative to the page and click OK. It just gives us a slightly different effect. Because we set the brush to recolor according to tints, if we change the color of our stroke, the color of the brush is going to be changed accordingly. Now before we leave this project, let's have a look at another way that we can use this cross stitch brush. I'm actually going to select this element and I'm going to copy and paste it into a new document. So I'm just going to paste it in here. Now when I paste it in, you'll see that the stitch comes in as a brush and I can actually delete this element now. I've just got my cross stitch here as a brush. Now I've also got a font here. I just typed in the word cross stitch and I've used the font Amatic SC Regular. I want to turn this word into something that has cross stitch on it. Now that's a little bit tricky. I've chosen quite a simple font that is quite leggy and I've done that for a really good reason because I want to make these into individual lines. So with this font selected, the first thing I'm going to do is rasterize it. So I'm going to choose Object and then Rasterize and then just click OK. What that does is it makes it into an image. So this is just a bitmap image, much like you would get out of Photoshop. Because it's a bitmap image, we now get the image trace option. So I'm going to click on image trace. I'm just going to click OK because I'm quite happy to trace this particular shape as it is right now. Once it's traced, if the dialog doesn't appear, you can just click to open up the dialog. Now I want to trace this as single line. So I'm going to select here from the presets. I'm going to choose line art. As soon as I choose another preset, Illustrator is going to go ahead and immediately retrace this. And it's going to do it every single time I make adjustments. Now, this has gone from bad to worse really, really quickly. So I'm going to turn off preview. What I'm going to do is increase the paths and the corners. I'm going to reduce the value on noise. And this stroke option, I'm going to set it up to 100. I think that's going to give me a better result. Now I'll click preview. It may take a little bit of time for Illustrator to trace your image. Just need to be a little bit patient at this stage. And it's done a pretty good tracing job. I'm pretty happy with that tracing. Generally, I'll start with a relatively small font size and then trace it. And now once it's been traced, once I go and expand it, just click here to expand it, I can now make it much, much larger. But I'll generally do that after I've actually traced it. Now, each of these are individual lines, so they're going to have anchor points on them. I'm going to try now and apply my cross stitch brush to my shape. I think it's going to be way too big a brush. Let's just try it. Well, it is. It's way too big. So I'll just press Control or Command Z to undo it. I'm going to adjust this brush size. So I'm just going to drag it out of the brushes panel here. I'm going to resize it by holding the shift key as I size it down and then I'm going to drop it back up in the brushes panel and create a new scatter brush from it. I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did previously. Apply it to my line. It's going to be the second brush is the one that I just created. This is the original. This is the smaller version of it. Again, double click on it to select it and then go ahead and make these settings for random settings for my brush to get a slightly more whimsical sort of result on my text.
and I'm only just adjusting these by about 10% at a time. Doesn't need to be much more than that. Up and down. When I exit the dialog, I'm going to click to apply it to these strokes. Now I can get rid of my brush itself and I can go ahead if I wish and recolor my art here. Since these are individual shapes, even though they're grouped, I'll be able to select an individual shape here and recolor it. So we could have each of these letters a different color. Now I have an entire class over at udemy.com on whimsical art. It's priced at $49.99, but I have a special offer for you. I have a $9.99 offer for that class. I'm going to put a link in the description below with a special coupon for all my YouTube subscribers and YouTube viewers. If you want to go and have a look at my Udemy class, if you want to buy it with a special coupon price, then I'm going to make that accessible to you. And in that class, you're going to learn a whole lot of additional whimsical effects. Not this one. You're going to learn a whole lot of new ones. But I just thought I'd give you a taste of the kind of things that I like doing in whimsical art and that you would be able to do in that Udemy class. My name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me for this video tutorial. If you enjoyed the tutorial, give it a thumbs up. Click to subscribe and click the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And until next time, thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel.